this is a gun that I could have endless good things to say about, but I'm going to try to keep this short. Welcome back, guys. This is a regular guy, and I have the Sig Sauer P226 chambered in 9mm. This is a full-size handgun that was a competitor against the M9 as a service pistol. It currently serves in many government agencies as well as the uh, special operations community and they have just recently in the last couple of years designated it as the Mark 25. This is a older handgun that was produced in Germany and we're going to go over a lot of things. First thing, I'm going to go over my slightly scripted uh, set of bullet points here so that I can keep this short. Um, we're going to go over uh, design things that I do like, things that kind of annoyed me but are not that big of a deal. First things first, these sights are pretty good. I like them. These are the dash dot profile. They're actually fairly um, old. Uh, from what I understand, they went over to the three dot system. And I like the little cutout that they have in the rear sight here as well. So that you can actually, so that you can focus on the sights a little better. Um, the slide serrations on it are good. And they're, they are actually a little more than what they seem to be. Because it just seems like a couple of lines milled in there. But they grasp the hands really well. The top portion of the slide was cut my my thought on that is that it was probably for weight but it actually does help you grip it a little bit if you're into press checks which I am so that helps out um, the 1913 style Picatinny rail is great a lot of different handgun manufacturers stick to their own proprietary design like Glocks and HK's which I don't get why most of the tactical accessories that are out there deal with 1913 style Picatinny rail and honestly I'm glad these guys got on board with the rest of the world. Um, the grips on the thing are actually pretty nice. They're rubberized and while I personally prefer a more aggressive grip texture this actually works really well. This is something that I would actually leave alone on the gun and not take a soldering iron to because while they're not as aggressive they get the job done and they also maintain a grip while your palms are sweaty and other various things that could slick your hands so that helps out pretty well the controls on it are right handed only all of them are on the left hand side of the gun and while I'm a lefty and while I kinda hate the fact that they're right handed only controls I can still operate the gun just fine the only thing I can't do very well is a freaking is to put the gun in slide lock. I look like a freaking joke when I try to do it. Okay, um, the grip angle is uh, more straightened than let's say a Glock or a 1911 with the proper mainspring housing in it. Like for instance, this is not a proper mainspring housing. The original um, John Moses Browning incarnation in 1911 had an arched mainspring but a lot of people decided to remove those and a lot of people forget that that was there and while this is actually arched slightly it's not quite to the same degree as an original 1911 or a Glock which in my mind is a superior grip angle just for like the bones in your hands and whatnot the uh, the bore axis on the guy fucking killing the camera here the bore axis and the height of the bore are actually kind of high though which means driving the gun as fast as possible is a little more difficult um, it's a training issue mainly but you do get a tiny bit more muzzle flip they compensate for this by, ha by making the gun overall heavier which is good because the gun is overall very 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 shootable so you can still drive this thing like a freaking lightning bolt it's just if you come off of a striker fire gun or a 1911 for instance you might find that there's a little bit a little little bit more muzzle flip in it so you know it is what it is the uh... now speaking of weight this is close to a two pound uh... gun depending on what you load it with and all that and the reason why is that you have a stainless steel slide and an aluminum frame as well as a lot of steel parts inside the gun and while that makes it a very durable gun it also makes it heavier 
So if you're considering it for an everyday carry type option, if you have the body type for that, um, just consider that it's going to tug on your pants a little more. And honestly, if you're willing to put up with the with the extra weight, that's fine. You know, so, but like I've said before, heavier weight is good because it smooths out the action and it makes the gun all around more shootable. So on a practical side of the house, the gun shoots very smoothly. Okay. Um, the magazines that came with this are built by Metgar. They're actually the distributor for um, Sig Sauer. And yep, there you go. It's in really, really little lettering. You can see it, Metgar, right there. And this is a 15 round magazine. Um, originally, that would have been cause for slight concern because other Wonder Guns that are out there are running 17, 19 round magazines in it. But they have extended them in brand, brand new, American made SIG 226s. They're coming out with 17 round magazines. The SIG 226 Elites are coming out with 20 round magazines. So they've covered down on that. It's not that big of a deal. Um, honestly, and moving a little forward, this thing is durable and reliable, period. I've never ever seen a SIG go down, whether someone has treated it really good or really bad. I've never seen one go down yet. A SIG 226 that is, or a 200 series gun. They work very, very well. And you can actually see, you know, this is supposed to be polished, but this did not come like that. And although they, they do wear on their barrels quite a little bit, the side of that bar of that uh, barrel hood should not be as worn as it is unless you send a lot of rounds through it. Um, so they are very reliable guns, and they built a reputation for that. That and it did actually get scarred slightly because the American-made guns they had some problems with their QC and uh, or quality control, and they were having guns that were coming off the line uh, lemony, you know. So they were having issues with that. The gun itself is very simple. Um, hold on. You lock the slide to the rear, push the, the takedown lever forward, and bring the gun out. And there you go. All you have to do is pop out your spring and your barrel. It disassembles very closely to the vast majority of semi-auto handguns that are out there. Um, let me do this real quick. And while operating the gun is fairly simple, it's a uh, double single action trigger is something I personally do not prefer for everyday carry. And that's only because it's two different trigger types that you have to um, basically adhere to. Because while the hammer is down, and that's how I advise you carry it, I don't advise you carrying it like this. Um, there have been reports of people becoming accidental, doing accidental and dumb shit by carrying it single action. And honestly, if something gets in your holster or you try to holster it back up and a portion of your shirt or coat gets in there, you can have an ND, which would suck ass. So I suggest you carry it hammer down. Now, that while the hammer is down, you have a double action trigger. It's about 10 pounds. And when the gun cycles, you have a single action trigger that's about half that weight. And I personally don't prefer that as an everyday carry option, mainly because I don't want to learn two trigger types for my carry gun. But then again, that's a personal preference, and it's all subjective based on what you want to learn. So, regardless though, it doesn't have a manual safety or anything else to mess with, so it is a practical and simple gun. Um, and those of you that like to accessorize your guns, don't worry about the SIG 226. They've built a huge reputation since the near mid 80s and everybody builds holsters for them everybody builds grips springs barrels lights whatever you need for it to customize the thing it's all up to you because everybody makes stuff for these guys now the only hit that i really have on this gun mainly is the price but there's kind of a reason for that um this was a 780 dollar gun and the highest I've seen like a SIG 226 Elite go for is like 1300 bucks, And they do go higher than that from what I hear. Um, to me, from a factory built gun, although it's built real fine, 
it doesn't justify itself too much in my mind, but then again, I own a Nighthawk, so that doesn't mean that much to me. Um, so price is subjective. If you're into buy once, cry once, look no further than the SIG line at 200 handguns because they will treat you right. Okay, so it's been a regular guy, everybody. Um, if I miss something, go ahead and leave a comment in the box below. I'm trying to keep this as short as possible. And remember, a regular guy's firearm is the last defense against tyranny. Be easy, everybody.